Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my Q3 favourites of 2022. So these are my favourite, my 10 favourite books from July to September 2022. There are 10 books, we're going to go in reverse order. Uh, keep your eyes peeled later on for this year, I'll also have my Q4 favourites, and then I do my year favourites where I take my 10 favourites of each uh, quarter, bung them all into an overall list, and we see what comes out as the winner. So, Dane reads... At number 10 we have Dead at First Sight by Peter James. This is just one of the Roy Grace novels. They're always good value, you know. I've read a few of them um, over the last quarter and this one is the best of the ones that I've read. Although they've now kind of blurred around in my head so much that I can't tell you specifically what, what this one is about. But if you like, like police procedurals, crime thrillers, you're going to like it. In at number nine, we have The Call of the Weird by Louis Theroux. So this is Louis Theroux's first book. And in this, basically, he goes back around to all of the people he met while he was filming his Weird Weekend series. And he just kind of catches up with them, sees what they're doing. And then he's written this book about his experiences and kind of, you know, what they were all getting up to. A lot of fun. You would enjoy it even if you hadn't watched Weird Weekends. But if you have watched it, I think you're going to like it a bit more because they're going to be familiar faces. But overall, cracking nonfiction. All right, then we have Pirate Latitudes by Michael Crichton. So this is a historical fiction pirate novel. It was actually discovered, I think, on his computer after his death, but it was all pretty much ready to go. And I said in my review of this one, I think, it doesn't feel like an incomplete novel, which is always the risk when you get something like this. Um, it doesn't feel as though, you know, he'd left just an outline or he'd left bits of it and someone's kind of come along and stitched them all together. It does feel like a finished work that was ready to publish in its own right. And it's just really well written. Uh, I'm not really one for a historical fiction that much, but it, I just thought it was particularly well done, you know? Then we have Asking for Trouble by Tori Wag. So this was a poetry collection. I actually met Tori at uh, an event. I was at, uh, I can't remember what it was called now, but it was organized by Far Out Sessions and it was like a live music thing and there were also stalls there. I was selling some of my books. Tori was selling some of hers. My band played, she did a poetry reading. Uh, and she ended up buying one of my books and I bought her collection, Asking for Trouble. Just really cool sort of contemporary uh, poetry. A bit of free verse and a bit of uh, rhyming verse as well, um, which is good. It gives you a little bit of everything, you know? Then we have God is Not Great by Christopher Hitchens. So this is non-fiction about why Hitchens didn't believe in God, essentially. Um, it has to be compared to The God Delusion by the very nature of the two different books, um, and even Hitchens and Dawkins were friends. I did enjoy The God Delusion more. Um, I think the reason for that is that Hitchens' book is very, like, it's led by, like, anecdotes and personal stories, whereas Dawkins kind of took argument by argument and just demolished them all. Um, but they both do go, go kind of hand in hand, and I, as you can tell from its inclusion on this list, I did enjoy God is Not Great. I also had it as an audiobook narrated by the author, which was very cool. And number five, we have The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. So this is, I guess it's kind of literary fiction. It's got quite bits of quirky, cozy mystery to it. Um, it's set during, I believe, the 70s. It's during that heat wave that we had in the UK back in like the 70s or whatever. Um, there's a reference of, to my hometown of Tamworth in it, which is very cool. A little bit of like the second coming or like people seeing the faces of Jesus in some guttering. Um, which reminded me of a James Herbert novel I read recently called Shrine. Um, but yeah, there's some really good stuff and really good ideas, very well written. It does follow younger characters, and normally I'm not really a fan of that. I tend to prefer reading fiction that focuses on older characters. But I thought it worked well enough for this book. Charlie here on, on YouTube, Charles Heathcote is a big fan of it. And there was also that kind of nice little bit of serendipity where... I picked it up during our heat wave of this summer, which is the heat wave that everyone compares to the heat wave that was happening in the novel. So I was reading about one heat wave while living through another, which was kind of cool. And number four, we have The Disappearance of Adele Badeau by Graham McRae Burnett. So this is, again, it's kind of a fiction, his, mis, uh, mis, bleh, it's kind of a mystery, uh, bits of cozy with it, and um, also kind of literary fiction set in France. Um, and yeah, somebody called Adele Badeau disappears and we follow kind of an unre unreliable narrator as the crime is uh, investigated. Then we have The Blade Artist by Irvin Welsh. So this is one of the, like, it ties in with Train Spotting because it follows Francis Begbie, who is one of Welsh's returning characters. In this, uh, Begbie has relocated to the United States, is making a living as an artist. Uh, he, is, he is the Blade Artist, and so basically he makes, like, sculptures of famous people and then fucks them up by, like, setting them on fire and cutting them up with knives and stuff. Um, but yeah, he uh, his 
I want to say it's his son dies, um, and he goes back to Edinburgh and, you know, chaos ensues. And it was just particularly interesting because it kind of investigates what it means to be a reformed character and whether, whether one can ever truly reform, because back in his youth, Begbie was a, a right nutter. Um, and it seems as though he has things held together, but will they hold together till the end of the novel? Only you can find out by reading it. Then we have The Invention of Sound by Chuck Palahniuk. So this is, I guess, one of his more recent novels. The main character in it is a Foley artist, which are people who make sort of sounds for movies, and she specializes in doing screams. Um, but basically, she's also a serial killer. She kind of inherited the family business. So in a horror movie, normally the sound of someone's head getting smashed in by a baseball bat would be made by somebody swinging a baseball bat at, say, a coconut. And she just swings baseball bats at people's heads and records it and then sell, sells it to the to film industry. So it's kind of very visceral, very gory, very violent, very enjoyable, quite short as well. Um, really beautiful edition that I got it into. And I've actually given it to Shay, my girlfriend, uh, for her to read it because I think she'll like it. And at number one, we have A Dreamer of June by Brian Herbert. So this is a big, chunky book about this thick with tiny print. And it is a, a biography of Frank Herbert. So Brian Herbert is Frank's son. Brian has been working with Kevin J. Anderson to write like the expanded Dune series uh, and the newest one of those actually came out on the 18th of October, so very recently. And um, yeah, it was just a really well written, very moving biography of Frank Herbert. It's great if you want to know more about Frank Herbert, you know, the man who created Dune, if you want to see a little bit more into his head, find out what makes him tick. Um, but it's also, as I said, it's very moving. It's a moving portrayal of like a son trying to win his father's love when his father's obsessed with writing and maybe isn't the best father. Um, so yeah, just very much recommended. If you like biographies, if you're interested in Frank Herbert, grab it. It was, it was, it was a good, as you can tell, it's at the top of my list. So there we have it. Those are my uh, favourites of Q3 of 2020 2022. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.